Boris Johnson, A Very Political Narcissist, Part 3. Boris Johnson has been put into the Tudor scope previously, confirming his status as a narcissist and that he is a greater. Laura Kunzberg, a political editor at the BBC, uh, wrote an article yesterday entitled Boris Johnson, What is the Prime Minister's Relationship with the Truth? Her article is a very interesting uh, run-through of the behaviours of Boris Johnson and the relationship that he has with the idea of the truth. Now, while some of you may have little interest in the British Prime Minister, it is advantageous for you to listen to this further analysis of Mr. Johnson to help you understand the way that the narcissist utilizes truth and, again, utilizing this as a high-profile example. It also demonstrates also the way in which those that commentate about the behaviors of politicians, etc., can see that there is an interesting relationship, if one puts it that way, with the concept of the truth, but they don't necessarily understand what's really driving it. It also provides you with a very useful example of how a greater operates with regard to the concept of the truth. Before we get into the meat of the article, it's useful for you to have listened to my video, The Truth, The half Truth, and Nowhere Near the Truth. It's important to understand that the concept of truth is very much a matter of perspective and perception. There are things which, which are determined as established truths, or as I would call them, majority truths, where the majority of people accept that that is the truth. There will be those that will not, and that is because they have an altered perspective. And the truth is only described as such because it is accepted by the majority of people. We then have half-truths, where a version of that majority truth is utilised by the narcissist, edited, skewed, twisted, in order to serve our purposes. And then, nowhere near the truth, in effect, a complete fabrication, but not to the narcissist, because in the world of the narcissist, it is our truth. Certain narcissists have no awareness that they are lying, and the lie is their truth. The aware narcissist knows that a lie is being told, but simply doesn't care, and is so accomplished at advancing that untruth as a truth, they do so with utter conviction and invariably considerable efficacy. The article reads as follows. The truth matters, doesn't it? In what's meant to be a grown-up Western democracy, surely we'd all like to think so. It doesn't pay to be naive. Politicians, even really honest ones, regularly say things they don't quite believe. The public knows this. We don't expect our politicians to be angels. But outright lying, in my experience, is relatively rare. It is too easily found out. Only one senior politician still in the game has ever privately told me something that was utterly, entirely and completely untrue. It was proved publicly to be a lie a few days later. It is also rare for opposition parties to accuse a Prime Minister on the record of lying. Which brings us to Boris Johnson. The Prime Minister's relationship with the truth is under intense scrutiny at the moment. He is refusing to give full explanations on some issues. There are questions about how the refurbishment of his Downing Street flat was initially funded, and about incendiary comments he made last autumn as England was about to enter a second lockdown. Downing Street is repeatedly denying that he has done anything wrong. It is not the first time in Boris Johnson's long career that he has faced questions about his conduct and character. But the stakes are so much higher now. His unique way of running things, and sometimes chaotic approach to decision-making, has, sources tell me, led exasperated colleagues in number 10 to nickname him Trolley. You think you are pushing it along a path towards your goal, then suddenly it veers off disastrously, says one insider. If anyone wanted to submit accurate freedom of information requests on government WhatsApp messages, you'd have to include the trolley emoji, adds my source. Number 10 declined to comment on the name. 
It was Mr. Johnson himself who may have coined the analogy, telling friends he was veering all over the place like a shopping trolley, over whether to back, leave or remain ahead of the Brexit referendum, according to the Sunday Times. He famously wrote two versions of his newspaper column, one backing leave, the other remain, arguing through all the options to be completely sure. Some of his allies cite this desire to argue things backwards and forwards before reaching a decision as a strength, saying he challenges organisations and conventional wisdom. Now, this shifting from one position to another demonstrates the lack of a core, a lack of central beliefs. As I've explained in parts one and two of A Very Political Narcissist, Boris Johnson treats the truth like any narcissist as a commodity that is to be traded, to be moulded, to be exchanged, deleted and edited. He is well known for going down one route and then engaging in a complete vault fast. And with his carefully constructed image of bumbling Boris, he gets away with it. That no matter how many times people point out that he adopted position A and then has shifted to position B, he still manages to get away with it. And it is this mobility with regard to changing tack and doing so in a manner which can be seen, but in a manner which doesn't hinder or stick to him, demonstrates his prowess as a great narcissist. The fact that he will go from one position to another accords with the fact that there is no, that what you see has no core to it. That is the shape-shifting chameleon-like behaviour that you will all be familiar with in your own experiences with narcissists. The narcissist will say one thing at nine o'clock and then say something completely different at ten and then revert to what they originally said at eleven and see nothing wrong with that because either the unaware narcissist has been blinded to that behaviour, so they do not see that they have been contradictory. They will just deny that they said the contradictory comment, or it will be explained away. Or with an aware narcissist, they will internally recognise the contradiction, but simply don't care, and through deft wordplay, charisma, the wielding of power, shoo-shoo the problem away deflect onto something else, coerce the listener onto another point. The fact is that this shifting of position is common by narcissists as a consequence of one, having no true core, and two, the fact that everything is available to be altered, twisted, turned around, goes upside down, back to front and inside out, so long as it enables us to achieve the prime aims. The rampant hypocrisy that you see, the contrarian behaviour, is either not seen by the narcissist because they're unaware and blinded to it, or the aware narcissist knows it's happening but simply doesn't give a rat's ass about it and therefore ploughs on and is able to dodge any accountability because the narcissism has been shaped for the aware narcissist, the greater or the ultra, to enable that to be done as a consequence of higher intellect, a wider manipulative skill set, and access to particular resources to enable that to be achieved. And Mr. Johnson demonstrates that and embodies that shape-shifting persona. The article continues con uh, remarking on this ability to shift backwards and forwards by stating, others have a more straightforward explanation. He is just sometimes unable to face the truth because he doesn't like making hard decisions says one insider. Another says you're never sure what the real truth of a situation is. Others say it's hard to get clarity and a sense of purpose, or that it's hard to work out where his motives begin and end. And that vagueness, that amorphness, allows the rejection of accountability, because accountability equates to a threat to the narcissist's control. The article continues. So what does this tell us about the Prime Minister's relationship with the truth? First, the benign interpretation of how the Prime Minister operates. One insider who knows him well says it is simply unfair and easy to cry liar, as the opposition has done. 
He's far more complex and strategic, and people don't give him credit for how calculating and clever he is. And that is an accurate assessment of an individual who is a greater. Another source told the correspondent, Mr. Johnson has a genuinely selective memory, and that I choose to remember certain things or not remember the others is his default way of dealing with the pressures of life at number 10. And indeed, that is instrumental, again, with giving you an insight into the mind of the greater, that there is a selection that is made. He knows things have been said, but he chooses to jettison them, and does so knowingly and willingly. That completely contrasts with the behaviour of an unaware narcissist. The individual has identified that Boris Johnson is calculating and clever, and he absolutely is. And this ability to decide that truth can be dispensed with, and I select this alternative version of the truth, and do so knowingly, willingly, and effectively, is a hallmark of the greater and the ultra-narcissist. The article continues. For years, it's been the case that when things get sticky, particularly with Boris Johnson's personal life or financial affairs, he refuses to engage in those conversations at all, even in private with his close aides. The message to staffers is effectively, don't ask because I won't tell. Again, having that as a default position that other people around the narcissist know that you're not to question them exemplifies the power of the greater and the ultra. One source told the correspondence, that is why right now life in number 10 is bound to be tense and difficult. Part of the problem is that these two things, his personal relationships and his financial situation, are colliding. He'll be finding it very difficult, and people trying to advise him will also find that hard. But is he not telling the truth? This particular source believes that the Prime Minister may try to evade questions about matters of the home and heart, but not on political issues. And to a degree, every politician has to go out and say things they don't always agree with. He's a professional and he does that. There's another layer when it comes to Mr Johnson, though, the article explains, and discussing his habits with many of those who have worked alongside him, his former life as a journalist is often mentioned. Even his worst enemy would acknowledge that he is a skilled wordsmith, and he regularly uses his vast range of sometimes nonsensical vocabulary to deflect, to entertain, or even ridicule. His vast array of words from the extensive vocabulary is utilised to manipulate through deflection, through word salad, through belittlement, intimidation, through denial. The article continues, It's certainly not unusual for politicians to try to avoid answering questions that would cast them or their parties in a less than flattering light. One of the Prime Minister's strategies, however, seems to be to bamboozle the listener with a blizzard of verbiage, suggesting agreement but not committing to anything. And again, that exemplifies the brilliance of the great and the ultra to... Make it seem as though there is an green agreement, but there actually isn't. That you feel like you're grasping scotch mist, that you're chasing after a willow or wisp. Former colleagues suggest that by the time they have decoded what he actually meant, the conversation is over. An insider told the correspondent, He frequently leaves people with the belief that he has told them one thing, but he has given himself room for manoeuvre. Believing that the fewer cast-iron positions you hold, the better, because you can always change political direction. And again being pinned down on absolutely nothing, is the strength of the greater and the ultra, and to do so at the top of the tree as being the leader of a country. The article continues, the verbal flourishes and rhetorical tricks are part of the reason why he has prospered. A lot of his magic has been those off-the-cuff off comments. That's why a lot of the public like him, says an ally. He was like an untamed political animal when he first developed his political style, says another, playing with phrases as he would in his Byzantine and flamboyant newspaper columns, teasing with words, presenting a character like no other politician. And again, this is part of the construct that the narcissist is utilising here, the presentation of a character, bumbling Boris, a carefully constructed, knowingly aspect of of the personality that is utilised in order to achieve the prime aims, but is selected in a knowing and calculated fashion. The article continues, Another told me it has developed into a way of shrouding what's really going on. I think he's an extremely shrewd and calculating character that hides it all under the costume of a performer, says this source. That is precisely correct.
One Brexiteer even suggests his mannerisms encourage others to be complicit. It's like a comedian. You're willing him on. You want him to be plausible, even if, according to them, it simply isn't. Again, such as the charisma exhibited by the greater and the ultra and the ability to cause people to become complicit in the manipulations and the orchestrations underpins the ability of the greater and the ultra to do that. That's when his personal style, according to others, tips into something much less appealing. A former minister once close to him told me, the problem is that it's becoming clearer that the Prime Minister treats facts like he treats all his relationships, utterly disposable once inconvenient, and of course, that is the hallmark of a narcissist. It's all about power. Facts, policies, people, they all get ditched if they get in the way, whatever is necessary. And again, narcissists operate with such expedience. Yet what's suggested, the article continues time and again, is that the Prime Minister's attitude to the truth and facts is not based on what is real and what is not, but is driven by what he wants to achieve in that moment. How many times have I told you that narcissism is all about what has to be achieved in the moment in terms of the assertion of control? The article states, it's about what he desires rather than what he believes. And there is no question that approach coupled with an intense force of personality can be enormously effective. In his political career, Boris Johnson has time and again overturned the odds, and that's a huge part of the reason why, and also the hallmark of the greater and the ultra. One former colleague compares him to the late Steve Jobs, and the comparison is a correct one. Jobs was also a narcissist. Jobs, the hard-driving founder of tech giant Apple. Jobs was said to have a reality distortion field. That is the narcissist perspective, described by his biographer as a confounding melange of a charismatic rhetorical style, indomitable will, and eagerness to bend any fact to fit the purpose at hand. That is the narcissistic perspective. In other words, the article continues, ordering the truth to suit his ambitions, refusing to take no for an answer, relishing proving that the impossible could be done. Sounds familiar? Mr. Johnson's former colleague told the correspondent, is there willful lying? I would struggle to appoint to a direct example. Does he recreate the truth to suit him? Yes. And this demonstrates that the behaviour of the narcissist is being exemplified in these examples. The sources and several others told the correspondents that the Prime Minister has a deep dislike of being accused of lying. Of course, any narcissist does because it threatens our control. Several sources have even suggested that during the 2016 Brexit campaign, he was nervous about the now infamous promise plastered on the side of his battle bus to spend £350 million a week, the UK sends the EU, to fund the NHS instead. Mr Johnson was conscious that every time he used this claim, it could be challenged by the fact that the £350 million didn't take into account the budget rebate the UK got from the EU. He wasn't nervous. What he was was concerned about an obvious threat to his control by pointing to something which could be easily demonstrated as incorrect. Whereas his modus operandi, like any other narcissist, but he does it in a particularly skilled way, is to take refuge in the uncertain, the amorphous and the vague. And the declaration on the side of the battle bus was not amorphous, was not vague and was not uncertain. The article explains, Mr Johnson was all about images, emotions. He didn't want to be pinned down to a number. Pinning a narcissist to something threatens our control. He was also understood to be unhappy about the campaign's claims about Turkey's proposed entrance to the European Union and the potential impact on immigration. Private doubts about whether the claims were convincing didn't stop Mr Johnson from becoming the biggest cheerleader for leaving the EU. The rest, of course, is history. Some of those with him on the Brexit journey don't think he was ever a true believer. Of course he wasn't. It was expedient for him to utilise that to enable him to, to secure the prime aims. Controlling people, drawing fuel, acquiring those character traits, and of course the residual benefits. Power. Getting into Downing Street. Utilising the campaign for the cult of Boris Johnson. And, as an astute political reader of a situation... He saw the which way the wind was blowing and allied himself in that direction. But, as a consequence of this, it demonstrates, as mentioned earlier in this article, how he would look at the two options available and decide which one would suit him best. He has no central core beliefs. His beliefs 
accord with whatever will suit his purposes, whatever will gain control, whatever will get him fuel, whatever will garner those character traits and residual benefits most effective, he will go down that route. And in order to do that, he has to behave in a manner which can't be pinned to anything. Hence, this bumbling Boris persona. And it is a brilliant construct as part of the way that his narcissism functions to create that. The article continues. Forgetting the recent history, does any of this actually matter politically now? Voters don't generally consider politicians to be particularly trustworthy. Boris Johnson's reputation and popularity is certainly not based on a view that he tells the truth, the whole truth and nothing but. He has what pollsters call authenticity. There's that word again. What you see is what you get. He's not super smooth and he doesn't pretend to be perfect. Again, he's conning people but they don't realise it. The current allegations about his conduct, which he characteristically describes as a farrago of nonsense, do not seem to be shifting public opinion much, if at all. But just because the Conservatives can shout loudly that no one cares about this stuff, that doesn't mean that the Prime Minister's complicated relationship with truth can be easily dismissed. Most straightforwardly, there are several investigations now into exactly what has happened with the Downing Street flat that could trip up him and the Conservative Party. Sources who told the BBC and other news organisations that Mr Johnson did say he'd rather see bodies pile high than take the country into a third lockdown have said they would be prepared to testify under oath if they have to. And of course, he may well have said that, a moment of arrogance, which may of course come back to bite him on the bottom to threaten his control. But Boris will deal with that in the way that a greater will do, utilising his vast manipulative array of skills and not craft to ensure that that threat to control is disposed of. The article continues, depending how and when those two issues unwind, and that's a big question, depending how, depending when, there could be big trouble for Downing Street. Politics is an extremely tough business, as Mr Johnson has been discovering of late. Huge parliamentary majorities do not protect you from personal criticism. Many of the government's current woes can arguably be traced back to the Prime Minister's relationship with the truth. I've been told on more occasions than I can count that Boris Johnson trusts hardly anyone, again, commensurate with the outlook of the narcissist, and suspects almost everyone, the paranoia of the narcissist which is present for all narcissists in varying degrees as a consequence of motivating us to ensure that through this distrust we nullify threats to control. The article continues, as one source describes it, he behaves in such a way that people eventually tire of him, feel let down and behave in the way he feared they would. The breakdown in his relationship with his former advisor Dominic Cummings is spectacular evidence of that. Indeed it is. But of course Cummings was the one that was dismissed because Johnson is the one that wields the power. But people who, think, who work alongside Mr Johnson are often kept guessing and sure of what he really thinks. And of course, that is the power of the narcissist to maintain those shifting sounds. It leaves him all-powerful. His whim rules. But it can also make it harder to achieve what he says he wants, the priorities he was elected to deliver. Of course, this is where people are being misled, thinking that he is actually interested in delivering on those priorities. He isn't. All he's interested in is the prime aims. And therefore, this article, which talks about the relationship between the British Prime Minister and the truth, is very useful at allowing you to understand more about how a narcissist, and here a greater narcissist, functions, operates, and how various things that people speak about appertains to narcissism, and how they are accurate with regard to what they're saying, but they, even though they don't know specifically what it is that they're talking about. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.